<laughs> We're here. Hello! The mystery teeth is me. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Welcome to Three Flings, the only show on Twitch with three tieflings every Friday night. Three Flings is a collection of one-shot adventures from the Uncaged Anthology, except tonight we are mixing things up. Either way, if this is your first episode or your 50th welcome, you are all caught up. And I'm not in my usual seat because tonight- If you stop, Jess, I've taken- <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we are playing Mass Frost Mighty Digressions by Draz, AKA Vittori Yay. from Candlekeep Mysteries. So, hey Draz. Tell us who you are before yes. we meet our teeths. I am Drez, also known as Allison. That's probably the name that, you know, you'll associate with it, this adventure. Um, I am your dungeon master today because this is my book and I wrote it and I wanted to force everyone else to play with me. Also, it's um, because I got my start in Uncaged. This is kind of my love letter to it. It's the spiritual successor, so I thought it would be a good fit for this show as well. Aww. Yay. I'm excited. <laughs> so I guess, Gwen, tell us about your teeth. <laughs> I'm Gwendy B, and I'm playing Adara, our resident fighty bitey tiefling. She has no magic, but she won't let that stop her from starting trouble. I. Uh, also, because this adventure is level two, we've, we've gone back in time, y'all. Uh, so, heads up, I guess, for when we don't have any of our usual items or abilities. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not like most of us have any. Yeah, I'm playing Baby Adara from last year. <laughs> uh, before she made a pact with death, even. Yeah. yeah. She could die in oh. this adventure. <laughs> uh, Ink, tell us about your team. Hi. My name is Ink, and as usual, I am playing our magical girl frog queen, Ophelia. This time, level two, uh, fresh into the idea of adventuring, and I somehow have less spells than normal. Who would have guessed? We've managed. Poor warlocks. Yeah, this is level two, so <laughs> they don't get any of the fancy stuff, no like extra attacks or anything, and because we don't remember when they leveled up to level three, we're just doing no magic items, just we're a professional you know, show. <laughs> yeah, we have no magic items just because you know it makes things easier for us, and you know, uh, we're, I guess we're, yeah, and we're trying to you know, if you want to run this adventure and you want you know something to look towards to you know help you out, you know, having no magic items means it's probably easier for you to know what, you know, probably gonna happen. Of course, if you have magic items, then you have to work around that, but you know. That's a thing you have to deal with. Not us. Uh, and <laughs> finally, Jess, tell us about your teeth. Oh, well, thanks for the introduction. I'm playing Mouse, and she is a celestial druid um, who just loves books and um, hangs out in the Candlekeep library and um, doesn't get outside very much, but um, yeah, Relatable. she's got big long horns and she ties ribbons to them to keep track of uh, keys and other small items that she just tends to lose when she's uh, studying. Because, you know, it's easy to misplace things, especially when you don't have pockets. I love her. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so shall we get started? Heck yeah. yeah. Woo. All right, so. Do you want to give us a, are we doing the inspiration for previously oh, or not? Because true. this is a I flashback. Mean, what if, what if we have to remember what last time's episode was for next episode? It'll be like four <laughs> weeks. We can remember that. Okay. I believe. Oh gosh. No inspiration, we go in raw. <laughs> but if you have channel points, then you can grant crits and not ones. So, you know, if you still want them to have an advantage. Notably, you that's can how grant you do them it. to us or the DM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He also forces to, to drink water and wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, 
basically, uh, Adara and Ophelia, you're with Shai. She, she, you know, she was in the area and she really wants to go to Candlekeep because it is an, um, like, enormous library with, like, lots of books that, like, you won't find anywhere else. So, of course, she was like, you know, I want to go there, I want to go there. And you're like, you know, we kind of want to make up for all the bullshit that we put you through already. So, yeah, of course, we're going to, like, you know, go along with you. You know, she's, you know, led you into the library because she's a bright horn and she can just do that because, you know, that's a perk of the bright horns. And, but like, basically as soon as you enter the library itself, she is gone. <laughs> she is just off into the shelves. You have no hope of finding her. So oh you, gosh. how do you feel about this? I. Uh in the library, Adara just immediately, like, half yells, like, Shy! How long are you gonna take? How did we lose the glow stick, Tiefling? Uh... It's a well, mystery. Out of every... As long as we're, like, <laughs> checking into the entrance periodically, we'll probably find her, right? It's gonna be sure. at least a couple hours. Yeah, there's only so many books in a library, and I doubt Shy would manage to find other ones. I mean, I was more thinking that at some point she's gonna have to eat, and I don't think they let food in here. <laughs> so, she will have to leave, eventually. Uh... In the library! <laughs> I mean, I don't know bag like snacks. I don't know All if right. Shy would do, do a crime in a library, you know? Ha! <laughs> I mean, yeah, but if she's expecting to be there for, like, several hours, there's a chance she might bring, like, some almonds or something in the bag. Jess. Mm. Yeah. This is Shy's version of crime. Jess. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mouse has has been looking for a book called Masfroth's Mighty Digressions. <gasps> it's a book that recently came into Candlekeep about five days ago, and you've You've heard a bit about it. It's this weird journal that some person named Masroth wrote. Um, we don't know their gender, we don't know their age, we don't know anything about them, but we just know that they they are very interested in knowledge and just like writing down like these things that are technically essays, but they quickly like spiral out into tangents, so they don't like have a conclusion or anything. But like if you actually like take the time to read them, they do like contain a lot of interesting information that you know you might not necessarily know about the world, and you've been really curious about the book. Um, and so basically, you've just been you just found the book. It's it's within your grasp. What do you do? Oh, uh, cute! <laughs> Aww. This is what I put all your combat in, by the way. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a book of fights. Great. Oh, so good. So I found the book? Uh, yeah, you have found the book. But oh, Lysander! I mean, uh, she covers her mouth. Something's wrong. Um, it, within your hands, it starts to changing shape into this ectoplasmic ball. Oh, I don't and like, like that! And, it, and you hear it going, Feed me! Feed me! Need life. Roll for initiative. With a book? <laughs> yes. Oh, no. oh shit. This is gonna be the fastest guest kill we've ever had. How did <laughs> oh we, shit. How, how did we hit little shop of horrors like right off the gate? <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. Uh, okay. And to be clear, Adara and Ophelia, you like are on the other side of the room, but you can see this happening. So, you, you know, you can also roll for initiative. Yeah. Okay, I, I will look. I don't have advantage because I don't have my magic shield. Oh no! Well, yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> How does it feel? Four. Twenty-one. It feels fine. <laughs> oh, I don't it need feels magic. Bad, bad. I got a uh, critical success, so I got a twenty-two. Oh nice. my god! Amazing. This is gonna be the one crit I'm gonna get this entire night. <laughs> so, if you got a twenty, what did everyone else get? Oh no. I'm so oh sorry, Mouse, but I'm so glad it's not me for once. I got a 21 because Adara doesn't Damn. need any fucking magic. Incredible! Ah, uh, 
that you say is... that as you immediately went, I don't get advantage. Yeah, I, the player, I'm like, no, my items. Adara would chastise me for being weak. Adara's right. like, get good. <laughs> I guess it, it only makes sense for me to do a, like a surprise round first, so rip mm. mouse. <laughs> Roll oh, six. mouse. Yeah, fun. seriously. Oh, bye. Forever. <laughs> oh, you're very lucky because I don't think a seven hits. So you see this is this actor it does not. Door, just kind of just like reach out towards you, but you like manage to dodge out of the way. Oh. And well that's... you can do a hit if you want. Uh yeah, I sure would like to do that. Um Okay. I'm going to um let's see. What can I do with my stuff? <laughs> I can. You don't get starry form yet, do you? No, you do, because they I get the level two. Yeah, Ooh. I do. It's the best for a level two campaign or adventure. Yeah. Um. So I'm going to drop the book if I can. Yeah. It's, flo it's floating in the air, to be clear. Okay. Ooh. It's like floating above your palms. Oh, Draz, you just got to crit from... <laughs> oh no! Thank you! Then I'm oh, no. going to um, wild shape into a starry form and take the shape of the archer. <laughs> which yes, lets me make a ranged spell attack with an arrow at the book because that book is not nice. <laughs> I believe you're attacking with shy. An arrow. Oh, I get it. <laughs> and this is the jokes you have to deal with. <laughs> you can't. You can't the keep you mysteries. Can All it, these like... jokes are in there, written down. <laughs> okay. You can find her like three miles away, just going. Oh. I feel like I should clarify. Twenty-three. Oh. Yeah. Also, for the record, this isn't sponsored. Just later. by the way, Wizards of the Coast did not sponsor this. <laughs> Yes, I put this in the chat. This is not sponsored, but there All are right. links to pre-order it if you want to support Draz and other friends. Yeah, ours. we just like yeah, Draz okay. and are proud of her. And so does a 23 hit it? Yes. That Roll is 10 damage. damage. Actually, wait. Is that magical damage or non- No, don't worry. That, I'm thinking of a different monster. So how much damage? 10, because I rolled nice. an 8. Nice. Radiant damage. Good job. Oh. I'm proud of you. All right, Adara, you've just seen this weird <laughs> chain of events where a book has turned into like a ball of ectoplasm and like this other tiefling in the library has turned into stars. All right, uh, so what what does the book look like presently? Ball, uh, it's like a glowing ball. So it's no longer like book shaped even? It just yeah, looks like ectoplasm? Yeah, it's not all right, great. Then yeah. I don't have to worry about Shy yelling at me. Um, so I'm just gonna <laughs> run over, uh, and I am not moderating my volume at all. I want to get between Mouse and the book. Uh, I'm gonna kind of look over my shoulder and just be like, uh, "You okay?" And then I'm just gonna um, draw. If they allow weapons in the library, I would like to draw my short, short sword. Uh, <laughs> if they don't, I'll throw some daggers at it. <laughs> It'd be a wild combat if like. There was like no combat allowed in the library. <laughs> <laughs> this is just how the adventure ends. No fighting the books. No fighting. <laughs> um, does a 14 hit? Yes. Cool. Then uh, the book will take seven points of short sword damage. Nice. And then I'm gonna bite the ectoplasm with my <laughs> yes. bonus action. Yes. Yeah. Natural 20 to bite. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's Hell all yes. down here, downhill from here. So that is <laughs> 11. Forbidden um, book 13 gusher. points of damage. Damn. <laughs> Forbidden gusher. Forbidden gusher. Forbidden gusher. <laughs> uh, Ophelia? Or do you have to have something else? No, I was going to say that's my turn. Okay, good. Ophelia. Oh gosh. Um so what can I see from this angle? Because I don't really just wanna throw a spray of fire in a library. 
see a big glowing tiefling. Yeah, and yeah. you basically see, like, closest to you is just, like, glowing tiefling with, like, stars and stuff. Then you see Adara, and then, like, I guess, like, you can't really see the ball anymore just because, you know, they're blocking the wave from your line of sight right now, but, you know, it's basically a line. You okay. see uh. Adara spit in the library on the floor, and so a small bit of ectoplasm just goes on the ground. Oh, no! Oh, okay. Library size screams. <laughs> She's not here, she can't um, stop me. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, is the book still around? No. It okay. is. It has transformed into a ball. Okay. And the again, become ball. Again, can I see the ball? Just for clarification's sake. Yeah, you can. You can. See, you, can you know where it is. Okay. Oh, and obviously, you can move towards it and everything, so you can definitely get a line of sight. Okay, I'm gonna move part of the way and uh, essentially yell at Dar and be like, "That's super gross!" And then I'm gonna cast hex on it. Um, so that's a bonus action for me. And that's going to have, uh, let's go disadvantage on, uh, strength abilities, because I know Adara at this point, and I know she is a strong baby. Do you? This is so <laughs> funny to me, because I can see what its strength is, and it's already abysmal. Well, guess what? Time to become more abysmal. Let's go. Um, and then as my main action, I am going to essentially tell Adara to duck, and I'm going to fire a crossbow bolt at it. Be like, please don't get impaled. And shoot without <laughs> it hitting a dart. Don't worry. Just yeah, turn okay, around like, like from feet. the from the ghost orb. No, Go for me, uh, fifteen. Just imagine you know, Ophelia turning around with like a crossbow, just like please duck. <laughs> Is a fifteen hit, Draz? Uh, yes. I read okay, Draz's lips because at a fourteen hit earlier. Okay, because I was going to say dress didn't say anything, and I'm like, oh no! <laughs> I broke no. the dress! You must uh, die. That's seven points of piercing damage. Nice. It is... <laughs> it is ball time. That's uh... not a sentence I expected to hear on this show, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, I guess I'm going to attack Adara. And I'm guessing a 23 hits. Yeah. What? I'll allow it. Draz, we're <laughs> level two! <laughs> yes, you will allow it. That is how this works. Okay, so. Uh... That is 10 points of necrotic damage. Can you give Ooh. me a con save, please? I'm a fighter. I'm great at these. Oh, thank God. Um. <laughs> Con, proficiency, constitution. I forgot to write this down. Um, that is a 17. Oh, nice. So basically this bulb ectoplasm reaches out to you going, feed me, and it, it touches you. And you just feel like some like your energy drained from you, like, but you're able to like, you know, stand your ground and not like get a lot of your energy stuff. So congrats on that. Uh, and it is back to Mouse's turn. I was gonna say, Jazz, I'm gonna cut in. I actually forgot that I deal an extra d6 necrotic damage with Hex on it, so I'm gonna roll that damage oh real quick for you now. Okay. That's six points of necrotic damage. That's okay, bad. the ball is actually dead. Yeah! <laughs> I hear <Yes>! us! <laughs> Congrats! Do you gusher? No, I can. Uh, Draz, may I heal or should I keep that on? Yeah, you can. May, you may heal the damage that I just did. Yay! Because we're level two and ten HP is I'm a lot. Sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, you remembered in time before Adara died. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which is good. Because again, she can die in this adventure. There is no <laughs> pact of death yet. I know. <laughs> Terrifying. The rest of the three flings is just like in Adara's dream. <laughs> oh no. In uh, a dying state. No. <laughs> Oh, no. Um, all right, so, so it, Mouse is going to get basically on the floor and start looking at like where the ectoplasm fell <laughs> and try and collect it, remnants. <laughs> it dissipates into nothingness before you're able to. Oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, and there is no book. Masfroth's mighty digressions is gone. 
Like, don't Hidar, think are you okay? that is supposed to happen. Uh, I'm fine. Hey, uh, new, new person. Um, oh, the fuck? Hi, nice. Uh, thank you for, for that. Um, that usually doesn't happen, but it is supposed to be a strange book. Um, where could it have gone? Uh-huh. So it, it was a book? Yes, Masrath's Mighty Digressions. It's, um, the collected thoughts and prose of Masfroth, the, the mage or oh. wizard or um, possibly a cleric. We're really not sure. That's why the book is so fascinating. Okay. Um, is it gonna, you like... don't seem like much of a reader. No, I'm waiting what for someone. What candle keep? <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for a reader inside uh, for the next, like, 12 hours, probably. Um, the best roast mouse could have delayed. Oh my god. So... Is it gonna like come back? I honestly don't know. But if it does, then maybe we could research it before it asks for food or see what it wants to eat. And wouldn't that be exciting? I'm so sorry. I'm being totally rude here. Um, welcome to Candlekeep Library. My name is Mouse. Um, I don't usually look like this. But it'll stop in a few minutes anyway. Um, what what were your names? Thank uh, you for the assist. Yeah, I'm Adara. This is Ophelia. Um, I was gonna say, is this part of the time when Adara still didn't know Ophelia's name and was just oh. going off? Of <laughs> no, that was that <laughs> was done by the one. <laughs> yeah, yes, I think I... it was only the first three episodes. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. I am walking up and trying to like yank the arrow out of the bookshelf and like wave while Adara introduces. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, if your plan is just to, like, research it, then, uh, good luck. But if it shows up and needs fighting again, let us know, because we're gonna be around and bored. You know, well being around and bored, um, <laughs> basically, in Candlekeep, it is overseen and, like, you know, maintained by this group of monks called the Avowed. Um, they are the people that let you into the library. Usually people need books to enter, but because Shy was there, you are allowed to enter because she's part of the Brighthorns. Um, one of them approaches you. Well, well you know, there are, there, are, there are monks around and one of them does approach you and being like, huh, one of the other books did that. Huh, how strange. So this is, is a this reoccurring a... phenomenon. Yeah, is this a this normal is... occurrence? This is the third book for this to happen to. What kind of time frame? I... The last few months. Two months, were... I think. Were to they be more all... specific. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's... Were they all books by Masferoth? No, this is the only book that we think that Masferoth wrote. Well, uh, kind of, you know, gone now, so. And that's very troubling because obviously you need rare books to enter this place, and this means that some people entered without those books. Or. Well, or they because... had rare books, but they also brought the, uh, the glowing hungry books. Yes, as a treat? Exactly. Maybe your library is cursed. Maybe the books were fine when they <laughs> no. came in, and something bad happened here. <gasps> we have very high magical security here, I don't think that's possible. We have a lot of measures to keep thieves out. I mean, they're not it... really stealing it, right? Yeah, do you get a lot of thieves that try to steal your books? And you have one of the most impressive libraries in the whole world. Of course it's going to be thieves, but they're just, they're usually not successful. Mm. However, uh, yeah? I was gonna ask, have you seen, like, uh, another tiefling? She's, like, it tall, she's got, like, these big glowing horns, she's one of the bright horns. Have you seen her anywhere? Oh my gosh, you came in with a bright horn tiefling? Did you come in with Shy of the Bright Horns? Yeah. Is she, have you, you know what are? Have you? Is Shy famous? Oh my gosh. Not that I'm aware of. 
Uh, have are you, you met friends him? with? Are are you acolytes of Shy of the Bright Horns? Acolytes? <laughs> Fucking I no. Acolytes? I don't think she can take acolytes. Is she high enough rank for that? I thought that was like. Oh my gosh, she is. <sighs> She's read so many things, and also she goes out and adventures so much. She's the coolest. She is the most well-read person that I have ever seen. I have never spoken to her because I was a little bit intimidated. But she has read so many things, and also she goes out and explores and brings more things back. And wow, that is so neat that you got to hang out with her. Now I understand why you're here. Sometimes she she takes along people that aren't quite good readers to add um, well, you know, encourage literacy. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, actually, no, this is gonna bother me. I'm literate, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> so is Ophelia. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, yeah, Ophelia's very literate. She has, like, actual spell scrolls on <laughs> First of all, uh, second, um, we're not... Shai's, uh, project were her friends. Uh, so maybe learn to, like, read the room a bit. But, um, anyway, monk person. Uh, look, I'm just saying, uh, kind of rude to make a lot of assumptions right off the bat. Uh, okay, yeah, well, we also just fought a thing in the library. I think any assumptions at this point are kind of warranted. Mouse just kind of, like, makes herself really small. What do you mean? I, I apologize. Just don't but, do it again. Wow! Again. Hungry book, huh? Yeah. The cleric that you're talking about, yes, I have. I've seen her, but she was going very far into the bookshelves. I, I'm not sure I could find her again right now. Mm. But uh, if you are looking for the person that brought in Mass Frost, I can certainly bring you to them, and there is also another person that is still in the library that brought in one of the books. Mm. Huh. I would be honored to meet them. That would be fascinating. Yes. See if, you know, they they were hungry books when they brought them in. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, the first one is Yolerion High Scroll, and um, Mousy would recognize this name because this is a cleric of Ogma from Waterdeep. Okay. And they are known for reading a lot of books, just like Shy, um, and to the point that they <laughs> no, all the last time we heard about the them, card. <laughs> they they were re like they were in the process of reading every single book in the font of knowledge in what I do. Yes. Okay. Um, Yelarion is currently in the um, House of the Binder, which is um, Ogma's temple in Candlekeep. And the second one is Valor. She is a tiefling, just like you. And she's currently uh, reshingling the roof of the hearth, which is, you know, another part of the keep. Because, well, we weren't sure if, you know, she's responsible. So she is currently making amends. Obviously, Yelarion does not know that their book has been transformed because that just happened. So I... Sh I guess you'll have also have to be the bearer of that news. And hopefully you'll be able to find uh, the source of this before we have to, you know, make them do recompense. Uh, I'm just going to share a look with Ophelia for a second and be like, do you, do you want to do this? Like, we got time, I guess, but... Uh... I mean, yeah. Oh, I yes. Talking to people about their library uh, history doesn't sound super fun. I mean, it's what Shy would want to do, and I feel like Shy would also want to know why a book tried to eat a person. That's fair. She's going to be pretty mad at us if we don't follow up on this. I mean, yeah, she would also be pretty mad if one of us got eaten by a book. Look, we're fine, and if it only happens once every couple months, like... She might stay here that long. She probably wouldn't stay here that long, right? I don't think she'd stay here that long. I don't know, but I would prefer not to get eaten today. Alright, yeah. Um, we'll come too. If you do help us, we can give you a helm of comprehending languages. Oh. If that, you know, makes oh, it more that, appealing. 
That would be good for both of us. Shy would be so jealous. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you get it, you can give it to her as a gift. Or I can wear it and just talk to her in like all her fucking stupid languages that nobody else speaks and she learned them because she's pretentious. I was gonna say, I mean, like, you don't even speak Infernal. Uh, alright. Uh, yeah, I speak Abyssal, the At better one. that, way. Mouse looks at Ophelia and says, oh my gosh, she doesn't in Infernal. Uh, I will <laughs> whisper back over to Mouse in Infernal. She doesn't, but she does speak Abyssal, which is, in my opinion, equally cool. Oh, that is pretty neat, actually. Yeah, I know, right? And then I'm gonna switch back to uh, Common and look at Adar and say, I was telling her you speak Abyssal, which is Really cool. Dadara has been staring at the both of you very intently while this is happening and just <laughs> says, Okay. The body language was very enthusiastic about the fact that we have someone who speaks abyssal. Like, I feel <laughs> it's very cool about that. She's like, Oh, that's awesome. You know, the fun thing about abyssal is that if you can uh, read infernal, you can also read abyssal. So you really only need to learn infernal. But it's really cool that you speak it. Did she have to come? Are you muted, hon? Uh, no. Oh, oh okay. We just didn't pick you up the first time. Oh, I, I uh, turned to Ophelia and said, does she have to come? I mean, Adara, how would you feel if Shy knew you were being mean to other people like her? She's used to it. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't like it. She doesn't like you being mean. I don't think she really cares. Usually I'm right. Well, Adar, I don't like you being mean, and I don't think Euphoria likes it either. All right. You don't have to be. You don't have to be nice to her. You just have to be decent. Because you know, again, bigger issue. Books just, trying to eat people. It feels like she's doing it on purpose, right? I'm not the only one who thinks that. I think it's weird, but then again, also, like, for a long time, I thought you were weird. I don't know. You're talking to someone who has experience with, like, five people. Mouse is, again, crawling on the floor, uh, even though she knows the book <laughs> evaporated, just checking for remnants of ooze. She doesn't know anything. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. that, that is how she's missing this conversation about her. Yeah, <laughs> she's I'm... currently crawling around on the ground. All right. I look at the door and be like, yeah, she seems like someone shy would want to be friends with. Uh, all right, I'm... I can recognize that I am outnumbered. That's fine. We can go investigate the book problem. Going to head off to see Yalerion? Um, that's a good question. I, team, do we have a preference? Well, it seems like if Valar is on the roof, then she, then they're here already, and that's probably closer. But I'm I'm new to the group, so it doesn't really matter to me. The place is in Candlekeep, so like they're both equally. Oh, they're both in Candlekeep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, we have a very low chance of finding Shy at this point, so it's like, Adara, do you want to go up on the roof, or do you want to go into another place in the library? Roof. Okay, I guess we're going under the roof then. You're gonna have to help me up, though. I'm not gonna be able to get myself up that easily. Sorry, if you're gonna leave the decision to me, obviously I'm going to the roof. <laughs> yeah, that's about what I expected, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you head over to the roof of the hearth. I don't have a map of Candlekeep on a board, and I don't expect anyone to know what Candlekeep looks like, so, you know, just know that you are watching a tiefling just like, slowly reshingle this roof and she has a permanent scowl on her face and she just she just looks so annoyed and she's just Another this <laughs> what's interesting about uh Bella is that she is clearly like a sort of a knight um so like instead of all the other people you've seen in the library which have been you know more you know scholarly types uh, she very much um Looks like someone who does fighting for a living. Finally. So it's very interesting that- <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, Adar, we found someone else who likes to fight! Yeah! See, the roof was a good idea. <laughs> so how so, does yeah, this, she... this work? Do you, uh, do, should we offer to help with the, the roof shingling? Or do you go up and punch her in the face? Or, um... 
Uh, I was gonna start with a hello and see how it went. Okay, I'll follow your lead. All right. Uh, hey, um, Valor. Hello. Why do you know my name? Uh, the people in charge told us we were supposed to talk to you about shit. Um, you brought books into the library, and some of the books turned to goo. That. Oh, fuck's sake. You're not the only one, though. Oh, good. That's reassuring. It certainly means that someone else has to deal with what I have to deal, I guess. Maybe yeah, they'll make a roofing party. Uh, so, basically, I bought this really expensive book so that I could get in here so I could research one of my bounty targets. And then, before I could leave, they were like, actually, your book is a ghost. And I'm like, how was I to know? And now they won't let me leave. They want me to do this roof reshingling. I don't know anything about reshingling, but they want me to. How much of the roof is left? Uh, like, a out fair of character? Bit. Oh, okay. Um, um, God, I have calculations. Um... Yeah, so three like days half, ago. Like a, uh, she started like three days quarter. ago, so Ooh. I guess, she, yeah, she is, yeah, about a quarter, I would say, of this roof. Um, what was the book that you brought? The Dark Hunger. It's the, this, these that incomprehensible like notes on Hadar, which is some being that lives beyond the stars. I didn't really look much into it because books are for nerds, and I'm not a nerd. So, you know, I only I only know that much about it because I wanted, you know, something that probably wasn't in this library already. Yeah, I know a little bit about Hadar and he is a very hungry dude, so I feel like your book was kind of appropriate, but that also doesn't mean it's good. I mean, I don't do books related to Hadar turn into orbs? Is that a thing that happens? I mean... He's just kind of a hungry guy overall. So. Interesting. Maybe. Do you, do you remember anything about the place or person you bought it from? <sighs> well, it was in Baldur's Gate. Um, it was in the Wide, because that's, you know, where really all of the trade in that city happens. Um, I didn't stay in there very long, though, because it... It reeks of greed, it's just, ugh, I hate it. It's fucking capitalism, am I right? Uh, but it was definitely not in the most reputa reputable core of the marketplace. It was, like, pretty shady. Hmm. <clears throat> so, I have a question. Um. Yes? Being that, like, you're not a nerd, uh, cause... Yeah. I'm not a nerd, and I can tell when uh, someone is <laughs> cool. Uh, why were you trying to get into uh, Candle Keep with all the like squares and losers who want to read? I needed more because I am a bounty hunter, and I needed. So there's some an missions. assassin in the library. I'm not here to assassinate anyone. I just no, you're here to needed... find the assassin and extricate them. Perhaps. But yeah, I have a very tricky target that I've been pursuing for the last while. And I came here because, you know, I figured I'll get some information here. And, you know, the book is a one-in-a-lifetime fee. So I figured that, you know, if I needed more information for other targets in future, I would, you know, be able to use this place as a resource. But I guess not. Because they're not going to let me out, and if I leave, they're not going to let me back in unless I have the book. Uh, can't you just, like, finish with the roof and then look for the book and then leave? I guess, but where do you even start, really? I mean, what? I'm sure it's probably organized in here somehow. Did you try and open the book before you came in? Or, like, no. did you pick it up and it started saying it was hungry? Well, I picked up the book, but I didn't read it or anything. 
So it could have been a hungry buff before you brought it in. Maybe. And like, I don't have any magic, so I can't, I can't like detect magic or anything. You don't have any magic? No. Yeah, I'm one of those tieflings that didn't inherit that shit. Ad Adara, at this point, is just gonna look at Ophelia and be like, See? It happens! <laughs> Again, you're talking to someone who's met, like, five people total. I didn't say you were wrong, I was just surprised. Um, yeah, I... Uh, I want to help you. Um, I... Yeah, that's... Sorry, that Same felt like it came situation. out... That felt like it came out of left field. I, I've been a bounty hunter too. Uh, I also have no magic. I feel like a kindred spirit here a little bit. So I want to help. Um, Gosh, it's like kiss me. I'm not going to kiss her. Bring it on, Duchess! What? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I, I have no idea said. what Jess just reports. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, so... I, I just, like, I want to help. It, can we, would it be more useful to just try and, like, figure out where your book situation went so we can just get you out of this roof detail shit? If you do that for me, I'd be so grateful. Like, I don't, I guess if you ever need my services, but you're also a bounty hunter, so. Um, I mean, we I'm not just, sure like. what use. We could hang out, like, we don't have to be, like, I don't, I don't need your help, but, like, we could just chat. I uh, don't know if you've noticed this about me, but I seem to find myself constantly surrounded by people who want to talk about books, and it would be nice to talk to someone else. <laughs> oh my- I haven't really had sat down to really talk with someone without, like, it being a job or something in a while, so, right? like, I would love to just be able to talk. Oh my god, and before this I was a bartender, and like, holy shit, they just keep going, and you just have to uh -huh oh my along, god. even if you don't agree oh with no. them. Oh no. I, I just want to uh. talk to like a regular person uh, with common interests. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, um, oh we're going to wrap this up efficiently so that I can make a friend, team. <laughs> <laughs> Ophelia's sitting there like, am I not a normal person? I mean, <laughs> uh, it, it's the common interest thing. For, for us, really. Like, I don't really feel like you'd be super interested in me talking about, like, the, uh, like, economic reasons to acquire multiple greatswords. Um, I mean, like, I'd listen to you. I, would, I wouldn't understand it personally, but I'd listen to you if you were excited. I appreciate that. S sometimes it's nice to have uh, someone who, like, gets it, though. Okay, that's fair. Cool. That's fair. I haven't known you for very long, but I think she can... Someone can have more than one friend. So just because she makes a new friend doesn't mean that she likes her old friends less. That is true. Again, like five people in my entire life. I don't know what's going on <sighs> half the time. I'm honored to be the fifth person you've met. Um, yeah, I think I would like you a lot. All right. Valor, is there anything else you can think of that would be useful for this investigation? Sorry. I mean, actually, they did tell me who managed to kill my book. Well, the book ball, whatever the fuck that was. Um, it, like a wizard killed it after it destroyed it. They're homunculus. So that's fun. And apparently, like, before, like, they killed the orb, it, like, transformed into a spider. I'm not sure how that factors into anything, but apparently that happened. Wait, the homunculus did, or the book did? No, no, the orb. The orb turned into, like, it went from book to orb to spider. Uh... I don't know what the what that means. Has, okay. Is that a thing Mouse has ever heard of? I was no. gonna say, equal question here on Ophelia's end, because she's read a ton. Actually, yeah, uh, if you want to... I guess that would be an arcana. Okay. Arcana or history, whichever you want. Oh, well, they're- I'm the same at both. Oh my god, I just lost that dice. Oh, uh, okay, I found it. For giggles, Adara is also gonna try, because she's smart Please, and now Adara, she has something I... to prove. I'm like, is this where I want to use my nat 20? Adara's like, how do I punch things good? It's a 12. I got a 20. So... Shit! Nice! I'm gonna save my nat 20 for something else. I got a natural <laughs> one. <laughs> so I have yeah, not Adara, you tried! I did try! Yeah. 
Ophelia, from the books that you've read, you figure that, like, this orb and the fact that, like, it, like, was able to stay as a book for at least a period of time, it's like, you, you've never heard of the exact thing that this is, but you feel like this is, like, probably, like, something that was, like, created for this purpose. Okay. So, like, some, so basically a wizard did it. Okay. Is, is your best guess. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. yeah, but that that's... also means that someone had to do it. Oh... That means that this was a purposeful thing. Adara, that means that someone wanted book to eat people or something. I mean... That sucks, but I feel like it also makes sense, because I don't really know how it would have come about without... Uh someone intervening. It's a pretty non-standard I mean, book behavior. I mean, yeah, we've met a lot of weird things at this point, though. Yeah. I've been called a devourer of books, but this was the first time a book has tried to devour me. Uh, maybe it's karma, then. Sorry, I meant is for that, that to be a joke, but then it just came out kind of rude. Is that car- is that what No, it is? could have been! <gasps> you know, my mom used to say that some books are better left unread. I think she was talking about her diary, <laughs> which I did read at the time, and I maybe <laughs> shouldn't have read it, but that's a whole other story for not brief times. Fair enough. Uh, huh. Okay. Do you remember, Valor, do you remember anything else about the, like, person you bought it from or their specific establishment, like, other wares they carried? Like I or the said, name I... of the wizard who killed it? Nope. Like I said, I was in the wide for a very short amount of time because I didn't want to stay there. And I... They... The monks told me something about the wizard, but, you know, I wasn't... I wasn't really thinking about that wizard. I was thinking about how I had to stay here and reshingle this roof. Hmm. Okay. Ah. Uh, what... We can try to do is we can try to put like two and two together and if we can figure something out i'll see if i can talk with one of the monks to like get you either to be able to leave this roof on shingle or i can try to help you finish it oh no can't hear you dress no that's very kind of you thank you yeah because also like book eating people not exactly your fault the stuff kind of just seems to Happen, I guess? Yeah. Uh, shit like this just happens near me. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna point it at Adar and be like, we've seen some really weird stuff at this point. Yeah. It uh, happens. You're not the only person that bullshit follows around. I'm not sure if that's relieving or... But, thank you. Yeah, everyone's got their brand of nonsense. Just happens. Uh, Ours is your salt, guys. Apparently. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah, we'll we'll be back with good news and or help. Uh, so time to talk to Eularian. 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 Yeah. So the monks bring you to the um the house of the binder, which is basically like a chapel. Kind of deal in what it, um, not what it, cattle keep, where all of the pr priests and followers of Ogma, the god of knowledge, um, hang out basically when they're not reading. And the monks point you towards this person named Yularian. Uh, they are a human acolyte with an approachable demeanor. They seem very relaxed. Um, and I will say that, yes, they use they them pronouns. Uh, and they, yeah, they seem to be chilling out and vibing, basically. Uh, well, this place is neat. Uh, excuse me, Yalarion? Oh! Hello! Uh, did you, did you want to talk to me? Yeah, we're kind of dealing with the books eating people situation. Books and... eating people? I, I, this is the first time I've heard of this. Oh, are you the one who bought Mazfroth's, uh, book into the library 
that would be me. Uh, did something happen to it? I was so excited to read it. I would be so honored if you told me where you found it. And also, if it was hungry and tried to eat you on your way from the purchase or uh, the the excavation to Candlekeep. I bought it from the wives in Baldur's Gate. Oh dear. And uh, I, well, that was uh, 10 days ago. And I, you know, brought it over here immediately and I, you know, gave it to the monks and ever since I've, you know, been staying here and reading books, basically. Did you try and read the book at any point? Yes, I did try and read the book. Uh, it's a bit inscrutable, but, you know, I, I did my best. It's, it's quite fascinating, really. It, you know, I'm very glad that now that, well, I guess if something happened to it, that's not the case, but I was hoping to, you know, slowly read it during my time at Candlekeep because it's, it was, it's not good travel reading, I will say. Do I believe her? Them. Them, sorry, sorry. Do I believe them? That they tried uh, to Do you want to roll an insight? Yeah, I do. Can't believe I'm the first person to roll insight this episode. I know, right. not Adara. Right. <laughs> Adara knew from the get go that uh, Mouse was uh, judging her and didn't need to roll insight to find that out. We haven't been jaded yet. <laughs> 14. <laughs> Innocent. Fourteen. Uh, you have every reason to believe that they are being genuine in what they're saying. Hmm. Okay. So, that means that it got into Candlekeep and then was removed and replaced with a mimic ghost. Or maybe it's like on a time delay. Like the it only activates after a... You said you bought it 10 days ago? Yeah, 10 days ago. It only activates after 10 days? I mean, based on what I can put together, it just seems like this... Whatever this is, like this ball thing, is like made for the purpose of like transforming and eating things. So I don't know if there would be a timer more just so as like a tactical time to hunt, I guess is the way you would put it. Like time of day? Does anyone want to roll an investigation check? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. This is definitely going to go great. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Not 15. That Six. 19. Failure and mouse. Be... No, actually, especially mouse, because this this ectoplasmic ball was telling you feed me, um, and I assume that you've told the others about this. Um, yes. You you gather that there's that the um, the ball can only like last so long without going hungry, and presumably like you know from the the time since. Uh, Yilaren bought the book, and now the book has not fed, and that's probably why it attacked. Oh. I will relay that information. I was gonna say, yeah. No, no, so Ophelia gonna... also... This is gonna be the one time. Yeah. I'm gonna know what's going on. Adara <laughs> nod <laughs> so nods this knowingly. This doesn't happen a lot. Adara nods knowingly, like, she also got that. <laughs> and this is not news to her. <laughs> yeah. Uh... So what do books eat? Uh, just as like a character question, Jazz, mm. is there with this like bulk ball thing? Is does it make like a definitive, uh, I guess physical move in its magic that you could tell that it is like trying to sap necrotic energy from someone? Uh. Uh, here's the thing, none of you actually canonically got attacked successfully because of the Hex doing retroactive damage, so you wouldn't know about the energy drain that it does. Okay, I was Oops. just asking because, like, some people, when they, like, describe their spells, like, necrotic looks one way, transmutation right. looks another way, that's why I wanted to know if just by, like, no. its attempt, if I could tell what it was trying it to do. It was basically an, a glowing 
three foot diameter orb that's kind of ghostly because it's made of ectoplasm. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to reach out, or like bits of it were reaching out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Adar, have you ever hunted a ghost before? Uh, yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you pretty were there. Adara eating a million ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, aside from the ones that we've met, uh, like what, what do ghosts usually eat? I mean, they. They usually don't eat. That's kind of one of the characteristics of ghosts. But some ghosts, like, I guess, should should I make a check to know how much Adara knows about ghosts? Uh, I mean, sure. Okay. Just before I start listing off facts about ghosts. Um, oh, okay. Was that religion? Yeah. All right, 16. So she probably knows some things. So Nice. She, she would at least say that, like, you know, sometimes, like, a ghost will try and touch you and kind of, like, drain your energy. But I don't know if that's food so much as a side effect of being touched by an undead. Uh, but that's the closest thing I can think of. Um, I've definitely never seen a ghost eating. Well, that makes a lot of sense as to why they're hungry, then. They don't eat. Yeah. I've read in some... Um... I've read in some illicit novels that ghosts can be hungry for affection. Uh, but this one what? seemed more aggressive. For what? <laughs> affection. Oh, I thought you said, like, evection. And I was like, what is that? Uh, I imagine that hugging these ones would go poorly. Maybe we can try some words of affirmation for the next one that shows up. <laughs> You're doing great, sweetie! Acts of service. You are strong, you are powerful. <laughs> your, your fears are valid, your form is corporeal. So, uh, Yolarian. Yeah. Do you remember, um, the, the name or appearance of the shopkeeper from which you purchased this, this, uh, hungry... Uh, sentient tome? I, I, I don't remember what they look like or anything, but I do remember that the store name had June in the name. Is, does that help? Well, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Yes, I'm, I'm very sorry. That place is so noisy and hectic, and uh, I just, I, I couldn't stay in there for long. No, I understand. The library is much safer auditorially. Exactly. Like, and there's so many books here that you can just read. Ophelia's giving, like, Adora the, the, the supportive pat on the back, like, you're doing a good <laughs> deal with this. Uh, it's just so <laughs> I mean, as long as you problem. have a book, you can go anywhere you want to go in your imagination. True, that is, that, that is very true. Adara is just giving Ophelia a look, like. Mm. <laughs> I, I know, Adara. I know. And then they talked about books for another two hours. <laughs> That's uh... the guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> you can go anywhere. You can be anything. Ooh, I mean, I can't maintain eye contact with the webcam too long. My eyes are watering. Um, <laughs> oh no! Fine. Adara literally actually in pain because of this. Physically <laughs> weeping, free me. His mouth, mouse just starts to sing the Reading Rainbow theme song. Oh my <laughs> god, Lavar Burton inexplicably comes out of the bookshelf. Adara just, oh. and I'm out. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, to clarify, the name mm. of the shop had the word Dune or June? Because I couldn't tell June. from- With a J. Sorry. No, no worries. Um, like it's busted like out a, all a over. Sand June. Like oh. a bug. So with a D. Oh, Yee. like a sand dune. Yeah. Yee. Uh, all right. Just... Oh, I thought Draz was saying June, too. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. wanted to clarify with the Australian accent and the slight Discord compression. <laughs> so, like, the planet. <laughs> no. Gosh. Like that really long novel scene. Uh, yeah. All right. It's Something a big dune. So, uh, oh, in case it wasn't clear, uh, we were supposed to come tell you that your book turned into a ghost. Oh, yeah, I, I have to tell you that at the beginning, sorry. 
kind of gathered that the conversation that you're having next to me, but thank you. Um, <laughs> It was really fascinating. I kind of wish you could have been there. I wanted to collect samples, but was unable to. Oh, yes. To it Love to be there, but I guess that's just the thing that just happened on its <laughs> own and without me there. But maybe if we can find this Dune person, we can uh, figure out what the books want to eat and then pacify yes. them or um, come to some sort of... Um, well, it would be great if we could find the actual mass for book but also we could come to um an equilibrium or a symbiotic relationship with the the hungry literature and we could yes, learn yes, from yes. each other do you think there are any books in here that have information on them because i might do that while you all books have information in them yes i i i mean i think i also speak for the when i say if it's gonna try to eat people i would rather they no longer exist yeah, I'm I'm not sure what they would contribute. I mean, I mean, there are lots of creatures that try and eat people, but does that mean that they shouldn't exist? Uh, I'm going to say it's a decision for the people in charge of the library and uh, leave it in their capable hands. I mean, you know, there are lots of idea. critters that try and eat you if they're hungry enough, but they can be absolute darlings once you get to know them if they're well fed. That's like right. Like bears. Yes. Yes, if if my book was hungry, as you say, while I was bringing it to here, then it didn't attack me at all. So we were able to coexist, you know? I'm giving Adara the look of way too many things have tried to eat us at this point, and I really don't like it anymore. <laughs> With her eyes, Adara's trying to communicate, like, you know, they've got a point, uh, and it's their heads if it goes wrong. Like, we'll be gone, so... <laughs> That was good to eat and after oh, this no. adventure. Yeah, get a actually <laughs> eaten. That's why we never see her again. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, so, well, no, that's how it is. Well, okay, then what now? Are we allowed to leave and come back? If we tell, like, the, yes. If we tell the monks that we're going to Baldur's Gate, can we go to Baldur's Gate? <laughs> how yes, far away um, is that? you are allowed to leave. Because unlike Eulerion and Vala, you did not get a book don't like you know turn into a monster mostly because shy you know help you gain access to this place and well as long as shy is still in here you can you know come and leave but as soon as shy has left then you won't be okay. able to re-enter unless you have a book so like how what order of magnitude travel time wise would it be to um go to the district where they bought the books is it like a week's worth of walking or is it like a couple four hours? days four days all right oh my gosh we will, yeah we will speed through that don't worry all right okay because um, yeah yeah, I feel yeah like... there's gonna be a map and then it like <laughs> just... uh oh i, I feel like there's new green map five days. I can't think of anything else to do in the library other than tell Shy that we're leaving for five days. Uh, I mean, can we really <laughs> tell Shy if we can't find Shy? Uh, we'll the pass on. Desk. Yeah, we'll pass on. We'll yeah, leave a message the in the front desk. Will tell her. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Shy not to leave. See, this is why you bring the bag snacks. Because then, if you don't, if you don't leave, then you let your friends back in. All right. Yeah. We'll just. But, yeah. There, there are meals and stuff available here for the people that stay yes, for days. So library. Shy will be fine. Yeah. We. Oh, said... <laughs> See, I just said Shy won't notice they've gone. Yeah, I was gonna say Adara <laughs> yep, plans to leave a note down. at the front desk, uh, knowing that there's like a thirty percent chance that Shy will end up seeing the note. And ninety percent of that is because she happens to walk by the front desk and somebody flags her down and says, "Hey, you have a note, by the way." <laughs> 10% like the... of that 30 is that she goes, it's been a while since I've seen the people I came here with. <laughs> it's it's like when you go to the mall and there's like a desk specifically yeah. for lost children. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like a and Ophelia just standing there for five days. Uh, Ophelia is sitting politely at the desk. Adara has like paced circles around it to the point where the floor <laughs> is a different color. 150%. <laughs> the carpet's just gone. <laughs> All right. So... Uh to the wide yeah here. Uh, five days later yeah we we, uh, uh, we idara tells valor or gives valor an update before we go so it's not just like yeah, yeah we'll be back soon with good news or help and then vanish for a week <laughs> and ghost <laughs> bye oh i get my that is 
means that I would get my little wild shape back. Yeah, you I'll get forget. all your stuff back because presumably in five days you will have a long rested. I have one out of my two spells back. Which is <laughs> Yay! Great. I've got my so... action surge back. Rah <laughs> 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 You have your health hey, back. Hey, hey. It was never yeah. gone. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, so you make your way from Candle Keep to Baldur's Gate, which is north of Candle Keep, um, and you eventually make your way into Baldur's Gate itself. It is a very large city. There are lots of neighborhoods, like some of them poorer than others, you know, various, you know, groups live in each one, and you eventually uh, reach the upper city, which is hope to the patriarchs, who are the wealthiest citizens of Baldur's Gate. It is extremely opulent. The streets are illuminated by magic lights. There are lots of luxurious boutiques and expensive restaurants all over this place. It is bougie as hell. Um, they, you, It's really obvious to see who the residents are here because they are judging everyone else so hard, just like looking at your clothes like... Oh, you know, I can't believe that costs less than like, like a hundred platinum, basically. They just, it is, like, the people here are just so rich, and and you think about how like you came here, you were walking through different neighborhoods, and those people definitely looked like, they definitely look like if the people that lived here like gave. Like the barest amount of charity, their lives would be so much better. Oof. So, oh, like, so the it's... disparity is so clear. It's Welcome to Baldur's Game. <laughs> Recycle the rich. Uh, oh, I God. love how we're going through this rich part of town. Ophelia's wearing, like, the same poofy skirt. Adar's essentially in, like, athleisure. And then Mouse is wearing, like, a, I'm assuming, like, a long, flowy, pale gown. Uh, yeah. It says she's in like a pale dress and like a probably a hooded uh, cape type thing that hides her. She thinks it hides her horns, but her horns are pretty tall. So really, it just has like two big points oh. in it that kind of it kind of pokes through. But she's like, yes, I am being unobtrusive mm, with my blue skin. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Adara's uh. wandering through Beverly Hills with her like old navy sweatpants and just like, sup. <laughs> I got really? Dunkin' Donuts coffee because Starbucks is too expensive for me. Mouse um, is really uncomfortable here. Like, she'd be uncomfortable outside anyway, because she's an indoor girl, but she's uh, super uncomfortable here. I feel like Adara's. So, oh, yeah. sorry. Adara's not yeah, uncomfortable, but she's. Because uh, she's from Waterdeep, so she's seen rich people before, but she's definitely, like, hostile. <laughs> <laughs> but not in an uncomfortable way. This is uh, familiar. Not hostile in an uncomfortable way. It, it's a familiar hostility. She's seen rich city people before. She'll see them again. I was gonna say, Ophelia's probably more surprised that people can afford, like, joy and be sparkly, like, all the time here. So I like, ooh. Yeah. You make your way to the Y, which is a really big marketplace, like, in the north of Baldur's Gate. It's like, there's just the hustle bustle, there's so many people. I think, like, out of all the places in the upper city, this is definitely the place where there's the biggest disparity in, like, wealth here. There's, because if you're in the market, this marketplace, then you're trying to sell your wares, and hopefully the rich people will take pity on you and, you know, give you business. Um... You can definitely see, like, in midst the crowd, there are some people wearing a uniform. They're members of the Watch, which is a military organization that protects the citizens of the upper city from everyone else. And they they are here to make sure that no one causes trouble and no one steals stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Ugh. So, uh... I'm gonna look around. Do we see any, like, bookstores that would that kind of match the June, description that we got? June things. 
Yeah. Yes. Um, it is a really busy place, but with the combined information that Yelarian and Bala gave you, you are able to find the bookstore in question because um, Bala said that it was in a not a not in the reputable corner of the marketplace. And obviously, with a marketplace like this, like you need to be in a good place, or else no one will come by your stall. And Yelarian mentioned that there was um, the word June in the stall name. So with these two things, you are able to find like. A corner of the market that's not that you know there are still people obviously going there but it's definitely less busy than other places and welcome to amber june books Ooh. um this yeah it's in an out of way corner of the wide and there are still always some customers pursuing its wares but like it's definitely like there are other places in the in the Y that like oh have way more business. Um, you see that there are two people currently here. Um, uh, one who's just like really like quiet and just like you know watching you know people to see that they won't like steal anything or like if they're interested in books. And this other person who's like really loud and he's reading like from one of the books to to be like you know and making a performance out of it. So that like people will come over and you know pursue their wares. Hmm. Uh just looking, is there one person that is like very clearly the owner? Um from these two you wouldn't be able to tell. Okay. Uh can I go over to the one that's that's not watching guard of the fact that things might get stolen? And uh yeah walk up and be like, hi, excuse me, I have a quick question I want to ask you. Did you, do you want to buy books? Uh, before I do any of that, uh, are any of your books haunted? No, no, these are, these are, these are good books. If, if you buy one of the books, I'm sure you'll have, you know, you'll get your money's worth. Uh, I want to, I want to know if this person is lying or if this is very okay. much just like a please buy my things okay inside check then of course 17 Ooh. okay so yeah you you have a feeling that like um he's not being dishonest but he's deliberately wording things in a way that means that he's not lying Person. Yeah, like he's not telling the truth, but he's not lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. not telling the full truth, but he, he's not like saying an outright lie. Yeah. Uh. Ah, oh, you should. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard you will get your money's worth of it because uh, I've had a couple people get their money's worth of monsters out of some of your books. Uh, uh monster? Um. I, I'm not sure about what you mean with monsters. Um, uh, uh, uh did you want to talk with our boss? Is this something that, uh, I, I, I think you, <sighs> Imba, Imba, when, when is she coming, is she coming around soon? Um, uh, is, this, is this nerves like, he doesn't want to talk to me, or is this nerves like he definitely knows why this is happening? Inside, you want to inside again, again, <laughs> again. That's a ten. I got a nat twenty. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Hey. Uh, I'm watching the guard while this is happening, just uh, in case uh, he starts like mobilizing to harass Ophelia or something. So that yeah, um, I have a twenty-two. Is, yeah, this is definitely this definitely seems like it's a panic because he knows what you're talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I monster is you know a strong word. Um, we've all been called monsters in our time, so maybe you don't think of them as monsters. Maybe you think of them as friends that get hungry and attack people when they're not fed. Um. I had a little brother and he used to do the same thing. If he didn't get his favorite snack, he would he would um, kind of lash out. And mom said it was because his blood sugar was low. I think he was just kind of a jerk. But uh, what I'm saying is that maybe your books are like that. 
Okay, while you're talking about this, like, you feel the presence of a third person approach the stand, and she goes, <clears throat> and, like, definitely compared to the other two, this definitely feels like someone who is in charge. This really tall woman approaches you and be like, hello, Taller is, than a dar. is there a problem here? Uh, problems here, but problems in another place with things that people bought here. So I just wanted to, like, figure some stuff out. We wanted to I know see. what to feed your books. Huh. Very interesting. Uh, and I, su I suppose there's no way to get you to leave without you wanting me to answer these ridiculous questions of yours. I mean, they're not that ridiculous when it's very obvious that your, uh, that your assistant pretty much definitely knows what I'm talking about. I mean, technically, you're the person the you could uh, the, the ask person us to leave you... any time. The, the person that you were talking with, with before, he, he cowers behind the storm, like, Koval, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't expect someone to come around and talk about it. And she's like, no, no, no. R Rama, it's fine. I, I can deal with it. Don't worry about it. You didn't do anything wrong. It's okay. And he's like, oh, thank you. Thank you, Kovala. Um, I do thank you. I'm so grateful for you. And she turns to you and we're like, all right. I don't think this is a conversation any of us want to have in public. Could you, would you come back to me, back to our office, my office? Just, just as a character clarification question. Yeah. This kid, this guy was originally talking about Ember, and this woman's name is Karbala? Uh, Amber June is the name of the bookstore. Rama is the guy we were talking to. Yeah, Rama is the... Karbala? Yeah, Kovala. I can put the Corvala. names in the chat. Okay, Please cool. do, because I'm gonna forget these. Okay, because earlier I thought the kid was saying something about, like, when is, when is she gonna come back? And I thought he was talking about Amber, like, if Amber's an actual person. Right. That's why I was confused. Okay, that makes more sense. Um... I'm gonna kind of look at her. Does she seem to be a magic user or someone who's familiar with it? Grow me arcana. Oh, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna vibe check this woman. Guidance! What? Oh, you get guidance? Can I what give you guidance to that? What is that, you... D4? Yeah. yeah, I think it is. Okay. I'm just gonna say, like, you got this. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, it wouldn't have been bad anyway, so that's now a 17 instead of a 15. Woo. You got wow. this. <laughs> He's like, Mouse is the drunk girl in the bathroom like, you got this, I believe in you. <laughs> I believe in you. She, from appearances, you feel like she probably at least has some knowledge. Obviously, like, she doesn't have, like, a spell book or, like, mages robes or anything like that that would indicate that she is a magic user, but, you know, something about her, like, Makes you makes you think that maybe she would be capable of magic. Yeah, mm. you can usually tell. I'd like. I imagine that it's probably something like an aura of magic. Like there's mm, something yeah. about it that you'd be able to tell. Yeah. As uh, as a magic user, like you can just sense something. You know. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna look at Adara and uh, kind of give her this look. Like, are you gonna? come with us if we follow her yeah I oh like the the two wait who are you talking to I oh Adara I'm kind of giving her a look okay. like oh you're gonna follow us if we follow her yeah um I think like Adara's been like standing off to the side not really part of this conversation but when when the lady's like come back into my office Adara kind of she'll like unfold from where she was hanging out near the guard and just walk over and be like all right let's go to the office, All right. right? Rama, Imba, I'm sure you'll do a great job on the rest of your shift. I, I hope to see you back at home. 
But uh, for now, I will be taking them here, there. Stay safe. Mm -hmm. And so she starts walking off in out out of the wide. Um, from what she's talking about home and stuff, you have you get the impression that when she means office, she doesn't mean anywhere close to here. <laughs> she means home office. Mm. Yeah. So before we go, um, I want a uh, mouse is going to go up to Rama, and yes. with druid craft, uh, make him a little flower in the palm of her hand that matches the ones that she has in her hair and give it to him because oh i know she was kind of hard on you but hopefully this will make your day a little bit brighter and just kind of hand it to him why does mouse make you ophelia look like the hard ass (laughs) (laughs) yeah he is just elated and he's like look look impa look look She, she gave me this isn't this isn't this cool isn't it pretty and Imba, like, for the first time, speaks up and he's like, yes, brother. That is that is really nice. I'm, I'm you, happy for you. Do you want a match? Uh, 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 I, I mean, if you are willing. She immediately, like, makes him a, a flower, too. Aw. That's oh, so cute. Was... Precious. Mouse is as soft as Ophelia was at level zero before she saw the world. <laughs> oh, no. This is the hard part, Ophelia's like, I want to get things done, but I don't want to be mean, and sometimes that means being mean. Mouse lives in a fucking library. She can afford to be soft. Yeah, I guess so. Uh... Alright, so yeah, you walk through the streets following Kovala, and you know, you walk through the, the upper city, and then like eventually, like, she walks out of the north gate of Baldur's Gate. There's like three different gates, which is why it has the name Baldur's Gate. There are lots of gates. And into the the northern neighborhood of Baldur's Gate, uh, because basically, to talk more about Baldur's Gate, there is like a walled part of the city and there's like neighborhoods outside who, you know, for the marginalized communities that, you know, want to live there, but there's not quite the space for. So this is one of those communities. Um, I believe this is Blackgate. And, yeah, she walks you through the streets of there as well. And, and, um, basically this is what you expect from the places that you've already been to. Uh, there, it's basically a sprawl. There's not, like, there are streets, but that's clearly more because they're needed, rather than they are- this is a pre-planned place. There's a bunch of, like, ramshackle huts and flimsy tents everywhere. The place smells of horses. Just absolutely reeks. It is- It is, like, especially since you've just come from the upper city, like, this place just- The contrast could not be clearer that- (laughs) That these people that, you know, have a stall in the wide aren't- able to afford something more, you know, opulent, basically. Ugh. Yeah, um, everywhere you see, like, people eyeing you because, you know, you know, you even you look like you have might have something worth stealing, but because, but then they see that you're with Korvala, and then they're like, you know, they look away because they realize, okay, they're cool here. And eventually... You make your way to uh, a, a dilapidated, dilapidated hovel in with wooden walls, which is located on like a narrow street tucked away in a corner. And um, yeah, Kovala opens the door. For a moment, um, the rug that is on the floor of this, the first room that she enters, like, like kind of like, like, like it, it, it moves up. And then it sees her, and then it, like, flops down back to onto the ground. And she just, like, crouches down, gives the rug a loving pat, and then moves on to a different room. And which, and she, you know, she's obviously expecting you to follow her. So, um, and then she moves on to a second room, where it's basically this... Well, the first room was basically like a living room. There was a bunch of chairs everywhere. It definitely felt like, oh yeah, this is clearly where, you know, everyone who lives here hangs out. Does and it feel she's like on... more than one person lives here? Like, she yes, said yes. she's... Um, okay. 
Uh, you see seven chairs in the first oh. room. Lobby, the yeah. here. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and they're all mismatched. Like, obviously, like, they they clearly, like, grabbed whatever they could to make this a livable space. It's, it's definitely nothing, nothing is a match set, basically. So yeah, uh, she she moves on to a different room. This is a, a narrow room that is just like filled with beds. Again, there are uh, there are six beds in this room. One of them is currently occupied by a, a middle aged woman who is like you know taking a nap. And but yeah, she moves past that, uh, and then she brings you to the office as promised. It is uh, a large wood, like, it has a large wood desk in the middle of it, takes most of the room. You know, there's, like, a quill and a bottle of ink that are, like, sitting next to a leather-bound journal, and there are a pair of decorative swords on the wall. And then, and then also... Hmm? Are they great swords? <laughs> no, they're scimitars. Oh, okay. Um, and then, like, in the corner of the room, there is a, a seventh bed, just, like, there, so it's, like, clearly where she sleeps. Hmm. Alright. So, did we want to have that conversation, then? Uh, I would prefer to, just because, uh, you know, kinda would prefer that people don't die when they go into a library. Could just be me. Yes, of course. I admit that the the eating part is definitely uh, a side effect that I would not have wanted, but you do what you have to do, really. What do you feed them? Well, they feed on life energy. You know, if they don't go to hungry for too long, you can pretty safely let them feed without doing permanent harm to yourself. And of course, in the past, you know, they're, they're very good for handling enemies if they come for you. Oh. Well, that implies you'd want to keep them hungry then. Which seems not Sometimes. very nice to the books. Oh, don't worry. Usually I would not want them to starve, but, well, like I said... These, this is a very unfortunate side effect, and I do cherish my gang Muslims a lot, but sacrifices must be made. You cherish, what was that word a lot? Gang Watsons. They're, I created them in a ritual that... Have well, I, I suppose... ever heard that word before? Yeah, no. I was gonna say, what? Okay. <laughs> you have not. I will say this right now, you have not. You, okay. You get the feeling that these creatures, they, you know... That's an Australian-ass word, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> I did Watsons. not come up with these. These are from, I think, like... Like, the original D&D or advanced D&D. It's not, not my creation. Okay, that just makes me think about The Simpsons, when he's like, I would have <laughs> called him a Chazwaza. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yes. So, what are those? Uh, I suppose, how much do you want to know? As much as you have time to share. Please. I can take notes. And she will untie a, a quill from her horns and uh, pull out a little notebook. She definitely, like, looks at you all, like, because, like, you get the feeling that there is a lot here and she's not quite sure how much she wants to share with strangers. But on the other hand, like, to answer the questions you have, there is... It seems like she is to figure out, like, what is, like, what information should she give away to give context to the stuff that you want to know? Yeah. Uh, I, and she, I do want to... Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, I want to look at her because she does look hesitant and be like, I do want to mention that, like, if you don't tell us as much as you know, it might end up coming back to 
bite you because, uh, again, people might get eaten. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Well, I guess I'll build up to everything, but basically, they're creatures that are created with a ritual. They weren't living before, don't worry about that, but they're energy gathered from the ethereal plane, so, which is why they're kind of ghostly, even if they're not actually undead. And, yes, they are crea- they are ritually created creatures that can take three forms. One being the true form, which is the ball of ectoplasm. And then there's- they can take up an inanimate object, which is the books. And the third one, which is an animal. Do they get to pick the animal, or do you do that? Uh, I, I choose them when I create them. So you like spiders. Spiders can serve a good purpose. I also like bats. Bats are good as, as well. But mostly I choose forms that are... If I need them to escape, then they have means to escape. Bats are such good friends. Yes. And yes, I... Usually, usually they are not intended for people, you know, taking them away for days without letting them feed. So that it is... But I didn't really... There weren't other options I could take for this. Why did you not, like, warn people when they decided to buy books from you? She looks off to the side, because clearly there is a lot that, again, she is not telling you, and you have not pushed her to talk about the things that perhaps you should be talking about, so she is, again, hesitant. I... then I wouldn't be able to run my business properly. No one would buy my books. So you're selling- Well, the expensive ones anyway. The, the ordinary books sell fine, but you know, they can't get you access into Candlekeep. Candlekeep re- requires you to have unique books. If they have it in their shelves, they don't want a second copy. So you're making up new books, uh, turning these creatures into the new books, overcharging people for fake books so that they can get into Candlekeep, and then the fake books turn into monsters and start trying to kill people, is what I'm gathering from this. Not, not the case. I have the actual books. Um, I. Who else lives here? My family. So we saw that the two gentlemen at the store, but there's a lot of chairs around here. Yeah. Is, what, what what kind of ritual did you use to, to make those books? Where's your family? So we went past, you... You saw Vani sleeping in the, in the bedroom. And the others are in the other rooms of this place. We walked past the kitchen and we walked past the storage. They're here. If you do anything wrong, if you attack me, they're going to attack you, if that's what you're insinuating. No, I just wanted to make sure you weren't turning your family into books. No! Oh, gosh. Well, Raman seemed awfully afraid of you. Not afraid of me. They're afraid of what will happen if this information gets to the wrong hand. So whose hands would those be so we know that we don't give it them. How can you tell until you get that you... Anyone and everyone, even you're the wrong hands if you slip up. <laughs> you're the wrong hands if you don't like what you hear. 
So what would slipping up look like? Would slipping up mean putting dangerous books in the largest library in the entire realm and letting them attack uh, scholars with little to defend themselves? Would that That's be slipping huge, up? You don't get it. You just... <sighs> Are you in danger from the books, ma'am? No. They're mine. It's fine. I'm not in danger from... <laughs> Anything or anyone but the authorities. All the people that might want to do us harm. Why would people want to hurt you, ma'am? You're not the first adventurers that me and my family have met before. Oh, I'm not an adventurer. <laughs> I'm just a librarian. These two, they're the real adventurers. And a uh, mouse will kind of scooch her seat back and beckon them forward. <laughs> you do hmm. know we're not like here to hurt you. You do know that, right? Please roll me persuasion. I'm being Guidance. genuine. Like I'm not. Yes. But okay. <laughs> Guidance. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. Real adventurer, you can do it. Uh. Yeah, that's a twenty-three. Oh shit. I got a 17, and then I had a plus 3, and then you gave me guidance, which gave me another 3. <laughs> Alright, yeah. She, she's, she pauses and being like, she be like, Alright. I guess I shouldn't withhold anything from you any longer. And, um, she, her face starts changing shape, and her body starts changing shape. Until her features turn into a jackal's. But she is still standing bipedal. And, um... Does anyone know what creature this is? I do. Uh, Mouse might not, but I do. <laughs> I'm, wa I'm wondering if Ophelia would, because Ink sure as hell doesn't, but I'm wondering if Ophelia would. You ha you encountered these creatures at level two. Was it before or after this? I was going to say, this sounds familiar. <laughs> the Kumiho yeah. was one of these creatures. Okay. Kumiho? Oh, so we but encountered it's... like a fox version? Mm -hmm. You encountered a fox. Yeah, what are they called? Oh, because it's a Korean term, too. I should know this, and I don't. Well, this is no, jackalware. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought Here's you the actual, like, Kumiho thing. Here's a fun part. Uh, when that episode of Three Flings happened, and I saw that it was a reflame of jackalware, it was literally around the time I was writing this adventure. Oh, oh nice. So I was in chat going... <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, sh before you is a jackalware and and yeah so i'm sure like I'm, for simplicity's sake i'm saying y'all know what a jackalware is sort of i guess I, i'll i'll give a bit more it's information it's a shape dog that puts you to sleep <laughs> yeah doggy nap time but i guess like would you know i guess i guess you would sort of get why she's hiding this, but obviously she's still still information. She is not telling you quite yet. Mm -hmm. But she's like, so, me and my pack, once upon a time, we serve the Lamia Nadalia. Yeah. She's great. She's the best boss anyone could have asked for. She... Well, Jackal wears where people call us chaotic evil. They say that we're monstrous and we love tearing people to pieces and just reducing them to nothing. But Natalia, she's told us that we're more than our nature, more than what people tell of us. She says that we don't have to be like that. And she, she taught us how to be uh, be not evil, and we lived our lives. All Nadalia wanted to do is to curate a collection of books and magical scrolls and other sorts of knowledge. And then one day, some adventurers come into our lair and without us even provoking them they attacked us 
they attacked Ndalia. Oh no. And killed her. Oh. I'm so sorry. And we managed to escape. I I managed to take her heart. I, I managed to mummify her heart and take it with her, take it with us, and any of the books that we could carry. We we had to move. We had to move across the country. We had to move to Baldur's Gate. What did we? We had nothing. We didn't have her anymore. I had to step up and be the leader. And I was happy to, but I'm nothing without her. I would do anything for her. And that's why... That's why I want to bring her back from the dead. But turns out that that's expensive. That that's not easy magic to learn. So before she died, because I was her favorite, she taught me this ritual to create these creatures. And after we escaped, I thought, this is the only way we can keep her archives intact, while also making money in the only way we could. If we sold fake books, and we kept the real books, we could make money, and no one would be none the wiser, but they needed to eat. And I guess there was only so long before we could keep this up, and someone found out. <sighs> I'm so sorry for your loss. But here's the thing. We thought these books, these expensive red books, that will let people into candle keepers. We only need to sell like five or so books until we get enough money, right? Except it turns out that running a market stall is more expensive than we thought it would be. That there are like fees to pay. That place is so corrupt. Like, they want you to bribe people to get a good place in the market. And there's only so much money I'm willing to spend on those things while also wanting to go towards our goals. And obviously we still have to eat. And there's just... <sighs> Nadalia, she said that we should be better, and we can be better than what people say that we are. More than the servants, the demonic servants that we were created to be. But it would have been so much easier if we just mugged some people, and we killed some people. <sighs> but she I know she's right. I know that. Well, you know, at least with this. <sighs> Tell me, did anyone die? Did no. Did anyone die? No. As far as we're aware, no. But. Uh, 
the 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 nice person that you sold the uh, the Maserath book to is a cleric of Agma, and and these two um brave adventurers here are also friends with um a pretty famous cleric of the bright horns and between the clerics of Ogma at candlekeep and the clerics of the bright horns that's a whole bunch of clerics that are open-minded and um are aware that history is written by the victors and a lot of folks who have a bad rap in the history books are actually pretty decent and maybe just got that way because you know somebody had a bad past with them and um well, the thing with clerics is a lot of times they do things for charity. So maybe um, if if we could get those real books or just trying to talk about uh, your your plight, then either um, um, the Brighthorns or the Ogma clerics, uh, was it Valerian? I think it was Valerian. They could be able to um, help you out. If not now, at least maybe soon, because you seem sad. That's a possibility. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, I don't think Shy has any of that magic on her personally, but, you know, she's not in charge of her order. There are other more powerful clerics. I bet she could do anything she puts her mind to. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah, with magical usage, there's, there's like actual constructive limits based on education but yes eventually <laughs> um but yeah we have right there. M mouse is right we have some connections we might be able to leverage to help um but other people are being held responsible for the chaos at the library that you caused so in the interest of like being a decent person uh that's also something we need to resolve yeah, like, I think I speak for the three of us when uh, I say that we do want to help you, but we can't help you to the best of our ability if there can't be some sort of accountability for, like, what has happened and the possibility of what might happen if this continues. Um, she walks over to her bed and she just slowly, like, pushes away like, from the corner to reveal a trapdoor. And she opens it. And she, you know, gestures you to walk down with her. That seems like a good time for a break. What do y'all mm -hmm. think? <laughs> um, we are at the, near the end of the adventure, so I don't think, actually think we need a break. Oh, I but, need to pee. Let's um, have a short break. break. Yes, needs to use the bath. We will be back. <laughs> All right, then. And Everybody stay hydrated. Five to like ten minutes, y'all. All right, we'll be back soon. Bye.
Draz is in charge. <laughs> yes, it is it me. so ominous. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we're going right. to the basement. Yeah. Ah! So she opens this trap door into this basement. You see from where you stand that it is a, like a narrow descending passage that like, that like in the, it's it clearly like she or like everyone like dug this out into the dirt of, you know, this place of town. And she descends down into it, expecting you to follow her. I'll go first. Does this feel yeah. like a trap? <laughs> uh, if it is, uh, I'll take the hit. Let's go. I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> Dora and I do... We have fought quite a few things at this point, so I trust the Dora, at least. <laughs> Play your lead. <laughs> I am gonna Maybe keep... we can find out how come she how she does that ritual and makes the the spider books. I really don't want to know. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I am I am gonna keep an eye out for traps because you know I the player I'm like this is trustworthy and Adara the character is like this is absolutely not trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, after a short passage, um, basically the dugout place like expands into a circular room that has two treasure chests. Basically, two padded, padlocked wooden uh, trunks, to be exact, uh, sitting in the middle of the room. And um, Kabala takes out her keys, and she unlocks the the one on the right. And, um, well, actually, and then after a pause, she also unlocks the one on the left. And she opens them both. Uh, the trunk on the left contains this heart that and that you you know from what she's talked about you know that this is the heart of alamia mm -hmm. and it is wrapped in black silk cloth and it's resting on a bed of of four like a like a decent amount of gold but you have a feeling that it's like not nearly enough money for like to purchase some kind of resurrection spell that they need so you assume that you know this is what the, this is their savings, but if savings was to resurrect a person, or a being. Mm -hmm. And in the second one, it, there are six different books. These are the ones that, and these are the books that, you know, have clearly, like, there's a, a fake version elsewhere in the world, basically. I'm sorry, I and, just and, an uh, awful Mouse joke. You... Hmm? I'm sorry, I just thought of an awful joke. Oh dear. When you said the savings in a box, I was like, no, that's what I call a life savings. Please <laughs> end me. But um shh. Oh yeah. Uh... <laughs> uh, uh... I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's nothing worse than what I've subjected y'all to. Uh is it is it really? <laughs> so what does she hey, there are... say? What? So Masroth yeah, is in six... there, and the other books? Yeah, Masroth's in there. Um, she, oh my goodness! She, Such she riches! Pauses and she, like, she grabs the actual Masroths and hands it over to you, and then she thinks for a minute of, like, which books have been sold, and then she hands over uh, two more books. Uh, one is called Fallen Tethema. You don't know who was the person that brought it. Presumably they bought it, like, in the last like nine days or so, so like the book has the book exists. No, actually, no. You you, you just don't know who the owner of this book, the person that brought this to Candlekeep, because it was like a month ago. I got the maps okay. mixed up. And uh, the third one is Avala's The Dark Hunger. And yeah, so yeah, these are the actual books. And she is hmm. willing to, for you to take them back to Candlekeep as long as you help her with her her problem. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to help you with your problem. Uh, Adora, how do you think we should go about doing this? And Mouse too, you're free to chime in. I just, I don't know exactly how we're gonna show up and be like, hey, you know those books you thought you had? Just kidding, here they are. I don't know I if mean, that's gonna go well. They've they've already figured out that all the books were, like, you know, 
fake. So we can just say, like, without naming details, that they were counterfeits. We tracked down the originals, so the people who uh, brought them in as payment are, like, good to go. And if they press for more details, we, we don't give them. Yeah, that was my main I thing. Think I think as long wanna... as they have the books, they should be satisfied. Yeah, that was my main thing. I didn't want to show up and have them be like, You took the books originally! You! Uh... I find it unlikely that the conversation would go in that direction, given that we, uh, are... We showed up coincidentally and have been nothing but helpful. And don't really stand to gain from this in any material way. Yeah, Best is seeing these books like they're basically gold. And <laughs> immediately, like, just plops down on the floor and starts flipping through Masferath. Surely this time it will work. <laughs> Surely this time it won't turn into goo. Maybe this time I'll be lucky. Oh no. Maybe Does this it time try the book eating? will stay. <laughs> <laughs> Bum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum. So does does the book attack her? No. Mm -mm. Seems like a legit book. Yeah. Um. All right. So our plan is to bring these back to Candlekeep resolve that and then be like also in exchange for returning these books we know someone who is in need of resurrection services at a discount they were instrumental in uh making this happen and we secured their cooperation on the condition that you cleric people would be able to resurrect someone close to them really we gonna give her a coupon? <laughs> I mean, uh, from what I understand, some high-level magic normally involves, like, a material. So, like, they probably do need some money to pay for the material part of it, but, like... If you, uh, yeah, if you ask, she'll confirm that, yeah, all the money they're raising is trying to get a diamond, basically. I'm trying to figure out how much is it usually... Resurrection? Isn't that, like, it's a diamond. Gold? I know, that's what I'm trying to figure out. How much is a diamond? Oh, my God. oh, uh, oh I can find the pot and the uh, one thousand. It depends okay. on the size. Yeah, at least 1,000 gold yeah, pieces it's... with some small concerns. Okay. Um, yeah. Because I was going to say, this could really play into the fact that Ophelia was like broke as shit at the beginning. I'll hand her like 15 gold and give it to her. Uh -uh. <laughs> Aww. I have no idea how much money I had at level 2, so I don't offer any. I don't have yeah. any money. Like, though. man, if, if this adventure happened when you, like, at now, like, level six, you would be able to be like, I'm done. You're like, what, you need to take it. Like, I have that in my pockets. Um, <laughs> oh, I was, this is just loose change. Uh, Y'all live like this? So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's our plan, right? Is go back to Candlekeep and be like, hey, here are the books. On the condition that you do this resurrection for this person who is not us. I mean, yeah, mm. that and please let the people go who accidentally brought you counterfeits that they didn't know were counterfeit. Yeah. I would appreciate that. Yep. I don't think she likes roofing very much. No. I... <laughs> oh, no, you can definitely tell. She she would prefer to do other stuff. Yep. Maybe if we told her that that roof is really the best place to skirt stargaze, though. I like to go up there and watch the constellations and talk to bats. Uh... I'm sure that's better than roofing. <laughs> yeah, uh, my whole thing is, I don't know if I'd want to sit on the roof that's not, like, completely redone. In case I sit on the weak spot and then fall and break my legs. That's a good point. Yeah, I kind of like having my legs not be broken. You gotta lie down so your weight is more distributed. Then you're less likely to punch through. So should we... I assume you don't want us to take this, uh, the heart of your, um, no. lady. Absolutely. So, should we bring the clerics to you? Yes, please. Okay. Do you have, like, a card? No. We don't no. really even have an address, really. We just, this place, people set up where they need to, where, where there's space. So, just give them directions to the shop. 
Yes, that would probably be best. I don't want people knowing about where we live, really. I mean, I would I would think that they'd be able to find you, especially if we were able to find you, and we only had, like, a vague portion of the name to um, go off of. I think we'll probably need to walk with them back to the shop and uh, supervise, because uh, we handled your transformation pretty well, and we've made some promises about the clerics being cool, but, like, you know, just... In case they get startled when they find out that the being they're resurrecting is a Lamia, then you have allies. Mm hmm Yes, of course. Well, thank you. I, I really didn't think that anyone would care enough that that help us, really. We're, we're not native to this country. We had nothing. So, it's, it's... It's really nice of you. Even if, of course, you have your motives, you wanna... You know, you don't want people to be attacked, and... If we're to be honest... We didn't really want the books to go to Candle... We didn't think that they would go to Candlekeep to begin with, but... Sooner or later, I guess someone was going to be attacked. But yeah. yes. Yeah, you should. I think we should just be glad that at this point, no one has died. You all, at least, will still be safe and have a chance to fix all of this. And at least for now, it shouldn't be a worry after this is taken care of. I hope that we'll be able to resurrect her and... and then everything will be fine again. And I don't have to... deal with all this. Uh, I, can't, I can't believe I learned how to run a business because of this. That's I mean, something that's to be proud of! I mean, yeah, that's dedication. <laughs> Anything for her. I owe everything to her. I think she'd be proud That's of you. At least I, I could do. I'll get the chance to tell you that. She must so have been too. really special. I mean, you know, Jackal wears, we're told that we were created to be servants of Lamia's, and, you know, we really could have had a. Much worse, boss, really. I think that more than being a servant, you're running your own business, you are feeding your family, you are paying your bills, and yeah, maybe a couple people got hurt with some books, but you made those books. And those yes. are all things to be really proud of. And, and maybe... You made a new friend who happens to really like books and is local. And I suppose so. Uh, <laughs> yes. I suppose that we haven't really been ones to have friends. We've, all we've had is ourselves and, you know, again, I'm really glad that there are people looking out for us. I mean, you're talking to a group of tieflings. I, I think out of everyone, at least, we have had experience with being very much, like, discounted from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, I think Kovala nice. doesn't understand that there's prejudice against tieflings because she hasn't really met tieflings before. But I think, like, I guess she, she looks at you again and she recognizes that, like, um, Jackal was are created by the demon lord Gr Grast. I don't know it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his name. I thought you said Grass and, Ditch. <laughs> <laughs> and she and she recognizes that. Oh yeah, you 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 all obviously have either devil or demon heritage. So like, she 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 hasn't like. It's not something like she is aware of herself, but you know she's connecting the dots, and she's like, I'm sorry that you all have to face similar kinds of discrimination and it's really kind of you to you know 
not let that make you turn into people don't, that don't care about the world. Yeah, well, we had a free week. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know much about Adara or Mouse, but at least I got really lucky in the fact that, like, people were more than willing to at least try to be nice. Even if that did just mean just, like, being decent and polite. Which is kind of hard to find, I've found. It's kind of shocking, actually. I didn't think that this would... That this was so uncommon. Yeah, a lot of people are shitty. But not all of them. <laughs> Hashtag not all people. Not all people. Oh my god! <laughs> Hashtag uh, not all like, humans. Like, yeah, Ophelia's just like, are, are most people shitty? And Euphoria goes off this long thing like, well, actually, not everyone. And then Adar's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is shitty. Alright. Um, back to Candlekeep. Yeah. yeah. Time for another four, four day journey. Five, five, five days, days of travel. Needy, Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah, another five days of travel, and obviously we're not gonna <laughs> have you do anything on the way back because that would... oh that would be weirdly paced. But yeah, they you return to Candlekeep and you're able to give them back the books and and Vala incredibly grateful. She's just like, oh my god, you actually solved it. I'm so happy. I. If I had spent, like, oh god, I already spent, like, oh my god, I spent so long on this roof, I'm so glad I don't have to spend another day on this roof. <laughs> I don't have to reshingle a single tile. You Thank you. On the ground again like you were meant to be. Yes, exactly. And, like, Yelera's like, Oh wow, you actually you, you figured it out. That's so cool. Maybe maybe we could write a book about that and then store it in the library and that's so that people can read it. Looks at Mouse, gives her like the look of like, oh you got this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shadara just puts a hand on Mouse's shoulder and is like, ask <laughs> permission first. <laughs> permission uh, to store it in the library? No permission to tell their story. Oh. Yes, yes. I, w I would definitely do that. And also change everyone's names. So it would be Elana, the surly tiefling. And um, <laughs> Olivia in her flouncy bowl dress. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh. then the monks... You know, also bring out the hell of comprehending languages. I said this in a Discord before, but I was thinking that the best... Obviously, like, Adara and Ophelia also want this helmet, but for continuing... <laughs> continuity <laughs> of the... <laughs> of the show, that, like, this helmet would have been so helpful for so many adventures that I'm because like, this mouse. has to go to Mouse. <laughs> so that just yeah. explains why they haven't used this helm before. Mouse is like, this is how... I will publish this in different languages. I think I'll be my own translator. I think Adara and Ophelia yeah. are like, we've been doing this adventuring shit for a bit. Like, uh, Mouse, you you take the commemorative, like you did an adventure. You you did it. You left the did library and solved adventure. Yeah, you left the they library and you solved the mystery. Item? And now you have uh, a reward. You got something oh. to show for it. Yeah. Yay. Yay. So yeah, you have managed to resolve the, this mystery. Great. Um Can I borrow the helm for just like an hour? <laughs> what do you just want? To it for? Shy. Uh yeah, Adara borrows the helm, finds Shy in the library, like sneaks up on her, and then like in um like primordial is just like What are you reading? And <laughs> uh, has has a moment to just flex on Shy and be like, I speak every language you speak now. How does it feel? Uh <laughs> And then returns the helmet. <laughs> Beautiful. 
This Perfect. whole time, you're just sitting there mocking her, and Ophelia's like, Yup. Yup, this is gonna be a common thing, isn't it? Yep. Maybe it's best if Mouse has the helmet. <laughs> yeah. If a, if a daughter tries to keep it, I will say, No. No, because you're just gonna make fun of- You're just gonna make fun of Shy all the time. No. But then I'll know when people are talking about me. <laughs> I can tell you when people are talking about you. I speak three languages. <laughs> Yeah. Obviously, like, you know, you contact, you know, you talk with Yaleron about, you know, maybe, like, if there's anything that they can, they and the other people, Ogma followers can do, and you talk with Shy about, you know, anything the Brighthorns can do, and between those two, um, you're able to, like, uh, you know, obtain the resources and the spellcaster need, because, um, um, Kavala was also, like, learning how to do magic so that she could eventually do a resurrection spell, which... Good luck with that! <laughs> um... You know, managed to res resurrect uh, Nadalia, and for that, the pack is forever grateful to you. And so, like, there's no, obviously, like, written down, this is an effect you get, but, like, you know, just know that out there in the Three Flings campaign, there is a pack of Jackalwares and Alamia who are kind of ride or die for you now. <laughs> yes! I love it! We've got something that Adara likes more than one dog. Several dogs! <laughs> Many dogs! <laughs> Many dogs! They have to go meet Crouton now. In the oh, future! Yeah. In the future, they can meet Crouton! Oh they my god! They see Crouton and they're like, why are you so small? <laughs> on all fours! Why oh. are you on all fours, child? Oh no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I so that is the end of the adventure. Yay! We managed Yay! to get it done in like a bit over two hours. Congrats to us. Oh my god. We, wow, we congrats. Okay. Since we did a speed run. Wait, congrats I never to you, Dress. Wait, congrats I... to you on your your uh official like, D, &D official... adventure. Oh my god. Wizards, Wizards of the Coast publication. Yes! Like, yay! New adventures in one week! Woo! Everyone, look at our famous friend. Uh, yes, yeah. thank you so much for running. Where can we find you in the real life <laughs> when you are famous? You can find me on Twitter at Drazillion. That's where I do all my shit. And also in the Three Flings Discord, where I also do more shit. <laughs> and you can be in the Three Flings Discord if you are one of our Patreons. <laughs> That's basically where you can find me. Ophelia, where can we find you in the real life? Hey, my name is Ink. I played Ophelia, your magical girl, frog, tiefling, like always. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at these dead pens where I like to meme and scream about things. This week I am memeing and screaming about, hey, if you're eligible, you should get vaccinated. That's a really good idea for everyone, including <laughs> yourself. And also, hey, maybe appreciate the Asian Americans in your life, like Draz. And you're She's not American, but she is Asian, and I, we love having her around. Mm -hmm. Points, points at ink, points, Ophelia points, uh, ink points back at us like the Spider-Man meme. The Spider-Man <laughs> meme, just us standing at each other. <laughs> but yes, uh, thank you, and thank you for being considerate, and listening, and being here to hear Jazz's story. For being a friend. I'm trying not to get his copyright address! <laughs> Adana, who are you in the real life? I'm Gwendy B all over the internet, and you can find me mostly on Twitter where I post my art because I'm an illustrator. Um, you can also hit up my Patreon, I guess. It's uh, just sneak pre peeks of stuff. That's it. It's two bucks to see things a couple days early <laughs> and like get picture walkthroughs, uh, which I'm writing up now, so that's neat. But uh, just again, Drez, congrats. This is great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate all of the things that you do, and I'm sure our entire Thank Patreon behind-the-scenes video is just going to be us talking about yes. how wonderful this was. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, I was Who like, are you? when I was starting this, I was like, oh no, the behind-the-scenes is just going to be talking about my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh boy, that's oh boy. a bad thing. I'm Jess, and I have stuff to plug this time. First oh off, uh, Book of Seasons Equinoxes. Tomorrow is the spring equinox. If you're in Australia, it's today. So use that code that I just put in chat and you can buy the PDF for half off for as long as the Equinox is, which means it expires basically a uh, Sunday American time. Uh, also, I'm currently in a Kickstarter right now, Cryptids Inc. 
we are um uh, it's 5e setting for uh like american cryptids where you can play and befriend or be foe bigfoot or bothman or the jackalope or the squonk and we're also writing tinder profiles for them which is my oh, yeah. contribution to uh Writing. Draz is writing for D D and I wrote Tinder profiles for Bigfoot and Mothman this week. <laughs> What's a song? Oh, so <laughs> speaking of things writing, I also upcoming for MCDM th uh, issue three of uh, Arcadia. Ar Arcadia, yeah, that's coming out soon, and I wrote another adventure for that. Oh my god! And now we are going to go. Uh, let's go to the Venture Maidens finale. Oh so we love you so much. We will be back next week. I am reclaiming my DM chair <laughs> and we are playing the serpent's tooth by Monica Evans and Tem Christopher from uncaged volume two. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we love you all so much and appreciate you spending your Fridays with us and um, love to Draz. Congrats. Yay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Everyone. Bye.